Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing on installing Nagios on an AWS Linux EC2 instance. It's a monitoring tool used to monitor networks, applications, and infrastructure. So if you can see on this particular browser page, uh, here is where we should get Nagios running. So let's go to the AWS console and uh, get to our EC2 instance. So I already have created an EC2 instance with AWS Linux image which is already started and I've connected to it using the PuTTY session. Let me just show you which instance I'm referring to. That is the Amazon Linux server mentioned here in the running instances. And make a note of this public DNS name and the IP address. So this is the server that we are connected to. And I have made note of uh, the DNS name and the commands that we will be executing uh, so that we don't make any uh, typo errors. So the steps are pretty simple, not much uh, complex. So as a prerequisite, we need to have uh, Apache PHP GCC compiler installed. So the steps are very simple, uh, like a normal install in Linux. So you just do a sudo yum install and then put on the services there. So like we progressed with the HTTPD and PHP, let's do the GCC and now let's do the GD level, sorry, GCC. And uh, press Y to continue, yes. And now once that is done, install the GD devil. The hyph you can give a hyphen Y along with your command in case you don't want to come into this prompt where you need to manually enter Y. So to avoid that, along with your sudo command, if you give a hyphen Y, we should not be, I mean, the system would not be asking for a user to enter any key then. So now let's create the account information uh, that will be accessing the Nagios. So it's just like normal steps of adding a user in Linux using the add user command. So I just create the user named Agios, and I'll give a password for that. sudo pass wd, and then the username. Username is nagios, Nagios in this case. You'll be prompted for the password. You need to enter it twice. Uh, just key in the password, and then confirm the password once again. Once you're done with this, you need to go ahead and uh, create a group. So it's again using the group add command. So sudo group add and then the name of the group that you're creating. And uh, we will be modifying uh, the permission, modifying the user's secondary group. So we'll be mentioning it for Nagios and Apache. So you just use the user mod command. So once we've uh, created the users and uh, given the password and created the groups, we will be downloading the uh, Nagios core package and the plugins. So we are good with uh, setting up the user modifications here. Now let us create a directory and download the packages in this particular directory. Uh, let's name the directory as downloads. So we download the Nagios core and the plugins. So just run the command mkdir and then use the tilde sign slash downloads, which means that it will download in the home directory. And um, under that, it will be downloads folder. So once you're in that particular folder, you can download the source code or the tarballs from the location, either from the Nagios site or from SourceForge. Use the duplicate command to download it from the CLI itself, or you can download it and then uh, using WinSCP, you can put it to this particular server and then try installing it. The downloads won't take longer. Now let's install the plug, let's download the plugins as well, and then we'll do the compile and install of it.
So now we'll download the Nagios plugins. So the version that we're using is 2.0.3. So once that is done, uh, we need to extract that particular package that we've just downloaded. So to, down, to do that, we use the command tar minus x, x, x that's for extract, and v is for verbers, and f is for forceful. So this part is done. Just go into the particular folder using the cd command. CD and then the version. Just make sure you either copy it correctly or use the tab key so that it auto populates the correct directory name. Now we need to run a configuration script with the name of the group that we just created. That is Nagios CMD. So you're just running the script. Uh, to run the script, use the dot and then slash uh, configure. It's better to you know copy the command in a notepad file and then execute it from there to avoid any mistakes or any typos. So now we'll be using the make command to compile the Nagios source code. Let me clear the screen and execute the command make all. So the make utility is used to determine uh, automatically what pieces of the particular large program need to be recompiled. And uh, it issues commands to recompile them so that you can make use of it in any programming language. We'll also be installing the binaries, uh, the init script, and some sample config files. Uh, using the same uh, sudo make command. So this part is done. Uh, let me just again uh, clear the screen and then let's go ahead and do a init config and command mode install. sudo make install. sudo make install hyphen init to install the uh, to compile the init script let me key in the exact command let me just verify it sudo make install hyphen init Now we need to run the command config. So sudo make install hyphen config. And also need to set the permissions on the external command directory. So have a sudo make for the command mode as well. So now we're done with the uh, compiling part, we can go ahead and uh, change the email address. So usually when you have configured any monitoring tool, we want the alerts to come down to a particular email address. So you can use any of any editor that you prefer. I'll use Vim here. And let me try and edit the particular file. So that's sudo. Vim is the utility name. And this is the particular path where we have the contacts.cfg file. So in this file, you can go ahead and modify the email address that would receive alerts uh, coming from Nagios. So this is a particular file. And if you scroll down, you see something mentioned as email. And then you have the email address mentioned as Nagios at localhost. So if you see it's mentioned, change this to your email address. So that needs to be modified to your email address. Uh, in case you're not familiar how this needs to be done uh, using this particular editor, you need to press the I key to go to insert mode. And then you can just hit enter. Or you can basically edit this particular file then. You can go ahead and copy the text 
paste it and then go ahead and modify it again. So you can just paste that, um, format it accordingly so that it's easy to understand. And go ahead and name this as anything, nagios at gmail or your particular official email ID. I'll just delete that. I won't be making any changes in here. I'll just exit without saving. Just verifying that no changes have been made. Okay. So once this is done, uh, we need to go ahead and uh, you know configure the web interface. So sudo make install web config hyphen web config. Sorry. And now we'll be creating an account as the admin account for Nagios, through which we'll be going ahead and configuring uh, the further parts in Nagios. That is not part of this particular video, but we're just creating the user so that I'll just show you how this particular user can log in and then make, make use of Nagios. So you can use the command sudo htpasswd. Let me just copy it uh, so that I don't make any mistake. That's sudo htpasswd hyphen c, and uh, then the path user local nagios etc. Once you do this, you need to enter the password twice. Uh, please remember the password or make a note of it. And retype the password to confirm it. Yeah. So now this is this part is done as well. You can go ahead and compile the uh, Nagios plugins now. We need to create, uh, I mean, go to the downloads folder where we have uh, downloaded the Nagios plugins. Extract that particular file also. It would be a tar.gz. XVFZ, and then the file name. And once it is extracted, you can go into the particular folder using the cd command nagios plugins 2.0. And then similar to the command that we ran for nagios core, we go ahead and uh, run the script, compile and install this particular plugin. So dot configure, dot slash configure. Just copy this particular command and execute it in the party session. Just verifying if the things are correct here. Actually, the group name needs to be Nagios CMD, so it was just mentioned as Nagios. So I've corrected that in the particular command. In case you want to know what command was executed, you can use the up arrow key uh, to know what was the last command that is executed in your shell. Let's clear the screen and uh, execute make, sudo make install. In a party session, if you want all these particular commands to be saved, you can uh, enable logging on, on your party session. Uh, so that all the output has been saved in a particular text file. I mean, that can be used as a reference in case you want to know what all commands you executed and what was the output for each. Just execute sudo make install. And then we can try starting the service. We'll use the chk config command. So this is uh, to set uh, this particular application or this particular service 
to automatically start when the system boots. So sudo chkconfig add nagios. And to make sure it is on, so sudo check config nagios on. Now we just need to verify if the uh, configuration files are same uh, within the etc config and the ones uh, from the sample. So we can just use the hyphen v command to verify between two files. So sudo and the path of the first file and then hyphen v and the path of the other file and it will let you know in case there are any errors or no. So no serious problems were detected during this pre-flight check. So everything is good there. Just go ahead and start the service, sudo service, and then the service name, and then the start command. Now we need to have uh, the security group created and uh, a security group created basically and to allow HTTP traffic because we'll be accessing Nagios through the web browser. So we've done with those particular steps. Uh, this is just a mention of the security group to be created. We can try accessing the page using the web browser. So we've made a note of the public DNS. So this is the security group that is created and uh, we've enabled HTTP on that. Now let's log in. So this is the machine and this is the name of the DNS, so I'm in mean the public DNS that we can use on the web page as the address. So I've mentioned that and put it as slash Nagios and let's try connecting. So that's the page which is open here. Let me just refresh and see if it starts up. Nope, I think we're missing something. Uh, just let me check. Okay, we are not able to log in. If you remember, we created the user uh, who will be able to access, but we missed one particular step of starting the HTTP service because it's, it's the Apache service that's going to run. That was not running, so let's start that. And I think now we should be able to, yes. So we are getting the prompt uh, to access the Nagios. Just given Nagios admin and key in the password that we just created. And there we are. So we can now access uh, the application and we can further use uh, the advanced features of Nagios to go ahead and configure your monitoring. However, that is not part of this particular video, but uh, the configuration of Nagios on the AWS EC2 instance is done successfully. That's all on this discussion for now. Thanks for watching.